Hello everybody and welcome to another one of Mr. Deeping Science Lessons. For today's session you're going to need a book, a pen and a worksheet which you can download in the link below. In your books I'd like to get down today's title which is smoking and for your starter activity I would like to suggest some of the risks which are associated with smoking. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time pause the video and when you're finished we'll go through some of the answers together. Have you got your answers? So the most common associated risks with smoking are lung disease and emphysema and other types of COPD. In today's lesson, we are gonna be looking at some of the other associated risks with smoking. So if you've got anything different from your starter activity, then you'll still get a chance to compare them later on. In today's lesson, we're gonna state some of the chemicals contained in tobacco smoke. We're going to explain the effects of tobacco smoke on health, and we're gonna suggest the risks associated with passive smoking. Tobacco smoke contains nicotine, and this is the addictive substance which stimulates the brain, making the heart beat faster. That makes this drug a stimulant. Tobacco smoke also contains carbon monoxide. This binds to your red blood cells, and it prevents oxygen from circulating around the body. It also contains tar, and this can accumulate in the lungs, and it can narrow your airways. These substances also increase your risk of getting cancer. We call these type of substances carcinogens. For your next task, what I would like you to do is to match up these three substances found in cigarette smoke to the effects that they have on the body. They are not already matched up, and if you still want a challenge, I'd also like you to suggest why smokers cannot exercise for as long as non-smokers. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock. If you need more time, pause the video, and when you're finished, we'll go through the answers together. Have you got your answers? So starting with tar, this is the substance that narrows your airways and increases your risk of getting cancer. Remember we called it a carcinogen. Nicotine is the addictive substance which stimulates the brain, makes the heart beat faster. We said it was a stimulant. And carbon monoxide is the substance that binds to your red blood cells and it prevents oxygen from circulating around the body. Some reasons why smokers cannot exercise for as long as non-smokers is because the tar narrows the airways and it's difficult to get air down into the lungs. This carbon monoxide is going to bind to your red blood cells, it's going to stop that oxygen from circulating around the body, and there's going to be less energy released by aerobic respiration. So now we have stated some of the chemicals which are contained in tobacco smoke. We're going to kick off the effects of smoking with heart disease. This occurs because you get fatty deposits in some of your blood vessels called arteries. Now sometimes some of these fatty deposits can break off and travel around the circulatory system and if that fat blocks the blood flow in the heart it can lead to a heart attack and if it blocks the blood flow to the brain it can lead to a stroke. Another disease associated with smoking is emphysema and this is where the lungs lose their elasticity. So when you breathe out your lungs recoil and you lose the ability to do this when you have emphysema. This makes it difficult to exhale all of the air out of the lungs. There's also a change in the shape of the alveoli. This is going to decrease the surface area and it's going to slow down the rate of diffusion. This means that oxygen is not going to diffuse from the alveoli into the blood as efficiently as it should. You are also more prone to get more respiratory infections. This is because your airway contains something called cilia. And these cilia are little hairs in the airway and they beat upwards. This beating is going to push all the mucus from the airways upwards, as well as all the dust which is trapped in them, all the bacteria which is trapped, and all the viruses that it's trapped, and all the other types of pathogens which could be there. However, smoking causes these cilia to become paralysed and they are unable to beat up this mucus and they're unable to beat up all the bacteria and they're unable to beat up all the viruses and because of that you get more respiratory infections. For your next task what I'd like to do is to use the information on the worksheet to help you answer these three questions. If you haven't got a worksheet don't worry about it you can copy out the questions and then go back through the video to try and find the answers and if you still need a challenge you can suggest why smokers cough a lot more in the mornings than non-smokers. I'm going to put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you finish, we'll go through the answers together. Have you got your answers? So three complications that can be caused by smoking. 
could have heart disease, emphysema, respiratory infections, lung cancer. And remember, we also said that you get those fatty deposits in your arteries and they can lead to heart attack and strokes. So question two, cilia are little hairs that are found in the airways. So the trachea, the bronchus and the bronchioles, and they beat upwards to remove the mucus that contains all the dust and all the bacteria and viruses that you have inhaled. So question three, why might this lead to some difficulty breathing? Well, if you look at the emphysema, it's gonna prevent you from exhaling all the air out of your lungs. The paralyzed cilia are gonna to lead to more respiratory infections and that's gonna decrease how well you can breathe. And because all of that mucus hasn't been cleared from the trachea and the bronchus and the bronchioles, it's gonna to lead to a narrowing of the airways. It's gonna make it more difficult to get air into the lung. Did you make a suggestion as to why smokers cough more in the morning than non-smokers? It's got something to do with that paralyzed cilia and that buildup of mucus. If you've got a really good answer, you can share it down in the comments below. So now I've explained some of the effects that tobacco smoke can have on health. Passive smoking is when you aren't directly smoking a cigarette, but you're in the same area as people who are. What I want you to do next is to copy and complete this table. It goes down eight lines and it's got two headings titled the effects on smokers and the effects on passive smokers. Underneath each heading, I'd like to write down the effects on our two groups of people, on smokers and on passive smokers. And if you still need a challenge, I'd also like to suggest why pregnant mothers who smoke often have babies with lower birth weights. I'm gonna put five seconds on the clock and if you need more time, pause the video and when you finish, we'll go through the answers together. So let's have a look at some of the effects on smokers and passive smokers. Number one, smokers get addicted. Passive smokers can also get addicted. They won't go out and go for a cigarette, but they will have a craving to be around other people that smoke. Smokers can also get heart disease. Passive smokers can also get heart disease. Our smokers can get emphysema. Our passive smokers can get emphysema. Our smokers can suffer with breathlessness and our passive smokers can suffer with breathlessness. If you are a smoker, you are more likely to get respiratory infections. If you are a passive smoker, you are more likely to get respiratory infections. Our smokers are more likely to get cancer and our passive smokers are more likely to get cancer. And for both our smokers and our passive smokers, this can eventually lead to death. Did you make any suggestions why smoking mothers are more likely to have babies with lower birth weights? This is because the developing baby gets its oxygen from the mother's blood. There will be less oxygen in the mother's blood because of all the carbon monoxide which is bound to it. So the baby will get less oxygen. So now we've established that the risks associated with passive smoking are the same risks that are associated with smoking itself. We've got one more task to complete before we wrap this lesson up. I would like you to explain in detail how smoking can damage your health. And if you really want to be challenged in this, I'd like you to try and use these key terms in your answer. I hope you've had a great lesson and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the lesson. If you found it useful, don't forget to press the like button. And why don't you subscribe and press the bell icon as well so you know when the next lesson's available. You can also support me on Patreon and you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter and I appreciate all the support. And I'll see you next time.